people in getting it out. Got one! Look at that, right off the bat. Oh, uh, They love this pattern. Hi, Peter Charles here, folks for life, fly fishing. And we're going to tie the crayfish pattern today. It's my most effective uh, crayfish pattern that I've been able to come up with. When I got into looking at crayfish patterns, I, you know, I looked at what was out there. I mucked around with various styles, and they were too involved. Um, and they didn't look that great when you put them in the water. What I was after was something I could knock together relatively quickly uh, that I wouldn't uh, stress over losing on the bottom because you're dragging these things across the bottom, obviously. So it had to be straightforward, had to be simple, and it had to work. And man, has this one ever filled on all levels. I just, I don't have a name for it, just call it Easy Crayfish, because it, because it isn't difficult. It is a bit of a fiddle at times, but you know, generally speaking, it's pretty good. So let's look at the materials. First off, I'm using a streamer hook, uh, and this one is a five extra long. You want the length for the body, but you don't want necessarily a large gape. My thread is a six aught Union Olive Dunn. Olive, olive, done, brown olive, all those will work. I'm using a small lead eye, and that's essential for this pattern. You need a little bit of weight to pull it down. Now, this is going to be a little bit unusual, but I'm going to be using this mohair uni yarn in a cream for the uh, underside. If you've ever looked at a crayfish, they're countershaded. They're, they're dark on the top and light on the bottom, so that's what I'm doing with this. You could use a cream dubbing. That would work just fine. I'm being lazy. I use the mohair. Uh, a lot of this uh, fly is going to be done with this lovely olive gray bucktail. This stuff is fantastic. Every time I see some, I buy two or three. And we're using this uh, olive, uh, dark green olive in uh, rubber legs. Again, cart fly, rubber legs. So let's start by putting on our thread. Oh, forgot one. We're going to finish it off with this Danville uh, fine monofilament. And that's so we can wrap over the final bit without it looking ugly. Okay, now onto our thread. Work the thread right back to the start of the gape. Okay, now we tie on our lead eyes. We tie them on at the rear, which is a little unusual. And it starts to spin. There we go. Even them up. Now it's time for the uh, the claws. So don't take a thick clump here. So we take one clump of bucktail, not very thick. Stroke out the short bits. Now I'm going to just take my scissors and I'm going to trim the ends off here so I don't have any strays. Because what we're going to do is we're going to flip this around and tie it in on the side. Pinch loop, get it started. Now this is where it gets fiddly. What we want to do is we want to separate it. We're going to use the lead eye to help us separate it. So the first couple of turns is a fiddle. Get your fingers in there. And then you're good. Once you've got it going, it's all right. Okay, just bring this one back and try to Keep it as much as possible on the side. You don't have to be neat at this point. Stop it about there. If it turns, bring it back. Now the other side. Again, trim them straight.
Now, once you've got them in place, you put a couple of wraps around each claw just to keep them in place. Otherwise, there's a tendency for them to flare too much. It's fiddly, but you get used to it. Okay, that looks good. Now you can see, now you can see where this all gets separated and the claws flare out. This is the fiddliest part. And you know, I ended up with a bloody thumb. I stuck the point in my thumb, it happens all the time. But once you get past this, it actually gets a lot easier. Just wrap that back. Stop about there, come forward. Okay, we tie in our mohair. Get our thread out of the way. I'm gonna use my rotary vise here. Makes this job a lot easier. Okay, initially we're gonna stack up the mohair at the front to make this part of the thorax thicker. Half the mohair, trim. Now we're going to flip threads. We're going to go to our mono thread. Turned it upside down. Now we're going to take another clump of, of uh, bucktail. Make sure you take a decent clump this time. Get rid of the short bits. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to line that up. Do a nice soft wrap in here. You don't want this spinning around. And then you just come over and just spread this out with your fingers. Try not to put the hook in yourself. Now, finally, we're going to put in the rubber legs. Now, that's unusual. You normally would put the rubber legs in earlier. I've always done it this way. I suppose you could put it in before the mohair. Um, I'll leave that up to you, how you want to do it. I guess the reason why I've done it this way all, all along is because this can be a fiddly pattern. So um, there's enough fiddles with other materials. So being last with the rubber legs doesn't seem to hurt it too much. And when you really pull this tight into the um, mohair, it causes them to really stick up. There we go. Now the other side. They really get embedded into the mohair. And then just work your thread back. Now the final bit is to take this material here, this bucktail here, and spread it out to make the tail. If 
If you find your rubber legs are getting in the way, take this opportunity to trim them off. So this becomes the tail of the crayfish. So now what we do here, we come in here and cut off at an angle like that. Get rid of the strays. And just round off the ends. There we go. Now I come in here with my half hitch tool. And now for the claws. Again, cut them off at an angle. Being careful not to cut your rubber legs. Got any strays, come in and get rid of them. The final step is a little bit of uh, UV. We brush that along the top. You want to put a little drip where the rubber legs are. Okay, there's our crayfish. Uh, it's caught a lot of fish for me. Um, the other thing you can do too, depending on your local pattern of crayfish, you can come in here and color up the carpus a little bit. The carapace on these are can have dark spots. So, you know, you can come in here with your markers and, you know, add some extra markings to it. I always find that I, I like to put a little bit on there. And now it's ready to go. It's, uh, it's an effective pattern. I've caught a ton of bass and carp and other species on this fly. It goes together pretty fast. Um, I've been in the habit of putting my rubber legs on last, but if you want to uh, put them on before the mohair, go right ahead. It's just me, it's just it's a quick way to do it. That's all it was. Um, because you lose so many of these on the bottom, you'd, I don't want to spend too, too much time on them. But it is a very, very effective pattern, and I've done extremely well with it. So, tie some up and go catch some carp and some bass with them, too. They usually end up in the same water. You usually end up with some of both. In fact, in one video, I had four species on this fly in the space of about half an hour. It was cool. Anyway, get out there and catch some fish with it. Cheers. Got him. Get him out here. Oh.